Welcome to the CADFEM ANSYS tutorials. I'd like to show you how to analyse an assembly with an interference fit using ANSYS Workbench. We shall start by examining the maximum transferable moment of force with respect to a full model, and we shall then go on to calculate the relevant quantities of a segment model. We link the imported geometry in Project Manager to the static structural component system. The material data have been predefined, and we change over to the mechanical editor. In the mechanical editor we can see the geometry consisting of two parts. Looking at the details, we can see that the interference fit has been modelled geometrically, i.e. there's an excess already present in the geometry. We require a contact between the components, and this will be recognised automatically. The two sides of the contact are portrayed here in red and blue, and by default this contact has already been assigned the properties of a bonded contact. So we now switch to a frictional contact, with a friction coefficient of 0.1. If the interference fit were not already geometrically modelled, we could specify it here as a numerical value. Since it has already been modelled, we can set this value to 0. It was preferable to generate the mesh in a controlled fashion, using a tetrahedron based map mesh. This was the best way to define the mesh, in that though it wasn't essential, you can see very clearly that the mesh partition on the inner part matches that of the outer part, in the peripheral direction, which improves the quality of the analysis. Now to the boundary conditions. We hold the inner component in place, in this case via the remote displacement option, where we reduce to zero the degrees of freedom, and where we define the displacements, the rotation, and the stiffness as deformable or rigid, as appropriate. Likewise with respect to the outer component, we zero the degrees of freedom as defined under Remote Displacement. This means that ANSYS will now calculate how both stresses and forces arise as a result of the interference fit. Simulating the slippage requires a second load step. And in this second load step, what we do is twist the disc with respect to the shaft. So we're defining two load steps, and for the second load step we provide a specific value for the rotation of the disc around Z. An estimated value for this would be 0 0.2 degrees. So in the first load step we define how the disc is thrust away from the shaft, the shaft being compressed. And in the second load step we define how the disc twists with respect to the shaft so as to see how the torque increases across the angle of rotation and at some point levels out we define several load steps i.e. we select the time stepping function and specify that we'd like to calculate 10 load steps in order to see the path of the torque we then start the analysis and in the purple coloured curve we can see the power imbalance which gets smaller and smaller at various points in the calculation until the point at which it reaches a state of equilibrium in each instance the cumulative time is represented underneath. So there are two load steps, the first being for the interference fit itself, the second for the slippage. Now let's take a look at the results, and the deformation in particular. The first thing you'll notice is how the disc expands, and then you'll see the twisting. You can also illustrate the stress, which in this case comes to 250 megapascals. The contact pressure is also of interest, so we select the corresponding surfaces and define the corresponding contact result with respect to these surfaces. You can see that the contact distribution is irregular. The contact pressure is correspondingly greater where cross pieces are located whereas the contact pressure is lower where openings are located. To determine the transmitted torque, we need to define a moment reaction. So we go to Probe, Moment Reaction. So let's take a look at the moment being applied to the shaft. You can firstly see that as the angle of rotation increases, the moment continuously increases, 
till the point where it reaches the threshold value of 676,000 newton millimetres, or 676 newton metres, which would be the maximum transferable moment beyond which the press fit assembly would slip though the path taken by the curve shows that some slippage also occurs below this value. Rather than analysing the full model, we could alternatively analyse a partial model in order to determine the maximum transferable moment on the basis of the contact pressure. In the segment model, which in this case is a one eighth model, we also have the two components that have the geometric overlap. And in addition, we have a frictionless support on the surfaces that were created when the section was made. And this gives us the same results, 250 megapascals. So we once again compare the full model, and we see that the results are the same. Let's look at the results in the contact area. We now see a maximum contact pressure of 140 megapascals, and a minimum of about 50 megapascals. To determine the contact force, we define a cylindrical coordinate system in the centre of our component, thus enabling us to determine the total with respect to the radial force component, i.e. we once again define probe force reaction. By this means we can find the total with respect to the contact in a radial direction. So we use the cylindrical coordinate system which has just been generated. And this numerical value, this 34,000 newtons, or 34 kilonewtons, this will be a variable that we can use to determine the transferable moment using this segment model. We multiply the normal force with the friction coefficient and the lever, and thereby get a maximum transferable moment of 680,000 newton millimetres, or 680 newton metres. In addition to the maximum transferable moment, the maximum transferable moment without any local slippage is also of relevance. This is determined from the minimum contact pressure, which in this case equates to about 50 megapascals, and from the total surface area, the friction, and the associated radius. And the result you get from this example is approximately 400 newton meters, instead of the original 680. The advantage of the segment model is that the calculation is much quicker. It only takes about 4 seconds, as opposed to the full model, which takes about 160 seconds for the calculations to be solved. So you see that intelligent modelling produces the same statement of results, but does so in a fraction of the time.